welcome today we are going to talk about uh, computer tomography scan of the heart so this is a very uh, interesting test considering that computer tomography scans are very useful in brain disease but the CT scan is also useful in cardiac respiratory and abdominal conditions and in cardiac or cardiovascular conditions that are most important or most valuable to be diagnosed by a tomography scan is a suspected aortic dissection. You can see very clearly the dissection by the contrast scans but and also the pulmonary embolism. But the problem here is to do a CT scan you have to move the patient from the bed, disconnect all the uh, monitors and you have to just take the patient to the CT scan machine. That's why you can do the CT scan in a very stable patient, but it's not feasible in a very unstable patient. In those cases, one of the options is a bedside echocardiogram, maybe a transesophageal echocardiogram. Here you can see a very good CT scan of the chest. Uh, it's a contrast CT scan showing you a Stanford type A aortic dissection. So you might remember what is Stanford type A. It's that type of uh, aortic dissection where the ascending aorta is involved. So uh, if you see the structures here, uh, this is the anterior chest wall, this is the sternum, those are the ribs and this is the chest wall, so maybe a female person and those are the scapulae here and here on also. Those are the, those black zones are the lung fields, those are the pulmonary vessels and here is the vertebra and is the back wall muscles. Here you can see the great vessels, especially this one, this big one in the ascending aorta. And in this ascending aorta, you can see a false lumen forming up. And here, this is the this is the flap of aortic intima that you can see that this is teared off from the main uh, wall, and this is going inside of the vessel wall. So here, a false lumen is being formed inside the wall of the aorta. And this is a very dangerous situation where you want to do a surgery immediately and you want to reduce the blood pressure as soon as possible. The other structures you can also see here are the pulmonary vessels just, just side to the aorta. And here, here you can see the descending, here you can see, here you can see the descending thoracic aorta. So this is the ascending one, this is the descending one and the arch probably lies above those areas okay so here is another image of an aortic dissection but this aortic dissection only involves the descending thoracic aorta so this is the Stanford type B aortic dissection this is a bit um, less dangerous than the Stanford type A because Stanford type A can actually cause aortic uh, regurgitation can also cause cardiac temperance so that's why it's very dangerous but Stanford type B out of dissection are less dangerous and many a times can be managed medically so here you can see the intimal flap that the fal flap creating a false lumen and it's a long one so from from the starting point of the descending outer to uh, up to the level of the diaphragm this this flap continues and you can see also this area here by this uh, arrow this is the this is the area of the aortic dissection and you can also see in some horizontal section that this is the flap and this is the flap in the descending aorta and also in the lower section you can also see this flap so CT scans or contrast CT scans are very useful tool in diagnosing these aortic dissections both type A and Stanford type B aortic dissection the other uses are the modern multi-detector scanning which can actually uh, identify any obstruction in the cardiac vessel so what they do is take a lot of pictures of the heart from different angles and create a 3d view or 3d reconstruction of those images which gives you a very good idea of how well the vessel is um, the vessel diameter is and how well the blood is flowing so those tests or those CT scans are especially valuable in patients with chest pain but who have a very low or intermediate likelihood of having a coronary artery disease. This test is highly sensitive so if the patient has any symptom, any problems with his or her coronary vessels, those will show up, those will always show up in the CT scan. But, but if he or she does not have uh, the disease, still it might show up in this test so this test has a very high sensitivity but a low specificity but 
the very high negative predictive value actually along with the very high sensitivity actually makes it a very good screening test for excluding coronary disease in patients who have a very low or intermediate likelihood of having the disease. So the point here is as the test does not have very good specificity that's why if the test is positive the patient may or may not have the disease but if the test is negative the patient does not have disease at all and the CT scan can be actually amplified the value of the CT scan can be amplified by using the modern volume scanner which can assess the myocardial perfusion by the CT scan so here you can see a very good picture or very good 3d reconstruction of the heart along with the vascular uh, territories here you can see this is the aorta ascending aorta this is the right coronary artery running from the aorta through the actual ventricular groove giving off branches this is the um, probably the right uh, ventricular branch and then it, it courses downwards and behind here you can see the left coronary artery or left main artery and giving off the LED and LED running from here towards the front in the anterior interventricular groove and giving off septal branches. Here is a septal branch, diagonal 1, probably this is the diagonal 2 branch. And the one that's running behind is the LCX which is not clearly seen in this view but if we rotate the view I can see that this is the LED running from L uh, main coronary artery towards the anterior interventricular groove this is the d1 and here this is the lcx probably this is a ramus branch this is the lcx running behind so if there is an obstruction it can be shown up or it will show up in the CT scan here you can see that this CT scan shows that this led is narrowed down and there are some scalcified plaques in the proximal led which is also seen as obstruction in the angiogram here is another image where you can see a proximal LED obstruction. This is the LC, LC main, so left main coronary artery. And here, this is the LED. This should be the LED. But here, this LED is critically narrowed due to any obstruction, due to obstructing atheroma. And this is the LCX running from here behind. And this is the first branch of the LCX known as the obtuse marginal branch. So that's uh, just basic idea of what what you can why why you can do a coronary CT scan and how much information it can give you it can help you to diagnose and treat patients thank you very much for watching my video